Hi, let me quickly explain what an associative array is in Python. First, an associative array is an abstract data type, meaning an associative array is an abstract category of thing. For example, car is an abstract category of thing. There are different subcategories of car, like a Ford Focus or a Ferrari, and there are also specific instances of the car category, like my car or your car or the car with the license plate L321C. You can touch a specific instance of a car, you can drive one, you can fill one with gas, etc. But you can't do any of those things to the idea of car. An abstract data type is like a category, like car, only it's defined much more rigorously than car is. An associative array is a data structure which meets the following conditions. It has a collection of key value pairs, no key occurs more than once, you can add pairs to the collection, you can remove pairs from the collection, you can modify an existing pair, you can look up the value associated to a key. Those are the conditions for an associative array, per Wikipedia. <laughs> Python has a specific implementation of the associative array, which is called a dictionary. This is a very useful data type. Below is an example of a Python dictionary, declared in code. Here we have our Python dictionary. The dictionary is defined between the square brackets here and here, and it's assigned to the name Roman numerals. The dictionary contains a collection of pairs. Each pair is defined with a key on the left, a colon to separate the key from the value, and the value is written on the right. And then the pairs are marked off with commas. You don't have to write them on separate lines like this. You could write them all on a single line, but I personally think it's just more readable to write them on separate lines like this. You could access the values of an ordinary array with their index. So for example, you could get the element in an ordinary array at index zero or index one and so on. With an associative array and with our dictionary specifically, you access the values not with an index, but with their associated key. So if we wanted to get this value, we would use the associated key x. If we wanted the value one, we use the associated key i. Our key value pairs have a meaning. The key is a symbol used in Roman numeral notation, and the value is the numerical value of the Roman numeral symbol. If we needed to know the value of a Roman numeral, we could access it. And here's the notation for accessing it. We give the name of our dictionary, and then in square brackets or subscript, we provide the key. Here, in our case, the string x returns for us the value 10. Suppose we want to write a function to convert digits as we write them today into Roman numerals, as they wrote them yesterday. With our Roman numeral dictionary, this will be very easy for us. Here's our function. Here's our function. We define the function as Roman numeral, and it takes a value in as an argument. First, we start by declaring result to be an empty string. And then we're going to iterate through for numeral in Roman numerals keys. So Roman numerals is our dictionary and the keys function on the dictionary will supply us an iterable which iterates through the keys of our dictionary, seen here. And by iterable we mean it's going to start and it's going to give us a value and we can say next, 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 next. And anything that is iterable like that we can use in the for loop like this. So this value, the first execution of our for loop numeral will have the first value returned to us from the iterator going through the keys of our Roman numerals dictionary. And then what we're going to do inside of the for loop is we're going to say while Roman numerals sub numeral is less than or equal to n, while that's true, Roman numerals sub numeral, the first time the for loop executes, it will have the value x, numeral will have the value x, while Roman numerals sub x, which as we see here, the value is 10, is less than or equal to n, our input value, what we're going to do is append to our result string the numeral symbol x. So we're going to add an x to the end of our result string, and then we're going to decrement the value that was given to us, the n. We're going to decrement it 
by the associated value, Roman numerals, subnumeral. And in the first execution of the for loop, that would be 10. So let's say we, we supply the string, we supply the in is 12. What it would do is it would say for numeral in Roman numerals keys, the first numeral is x, while Roman numerals of numeral, which is 10, is less than or equal to x. Our result will get an x, and then n will decrement by 10, meaning n is now 2, and our result is now x. The for loop, uh, the while loop tries to execute again, but 10 is no longer less than or equal to 2. So the execution of the while loop concludes. The numeral will get the next value after x, ix. The, for, the inner while loop will not execute because Roman numeral of ix is not less than or equal to 2, and so on. And it will move through until it finds 1 and then reduce our 2 value by 1, execute again, get 0, and it will conclude by having no more keys left to execute the for loop. And then it will just return our result, x, i, i. So here, we're just creating a list of all the Roman numerals for the numbers between 0 and 30. So this notation says, reading from the inside out, we're calling the function map. And map takes a function as its first argument, in our case, as Roman numeral. And the second argument map takes is an iterable, in our case, range from 0 to 30. And the iterable is just going to supply our function with values. So it'll give it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And map is going to create for us essentially another iterable, which we'll convert into a list, just so we can print it out and it will look nice. And so we can use this to just check that we're converting Roman numerals correctly. Of course, we don't have all the Roman numerals in our um, map, in our dictionary, excuse me. But, well, we'll be able to convert up to 30 correctly at least. And so we see 0 converts to an empty string, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Um, yep, so we're, we're, our as Roman numeral function works the way we want it to. Python's dictionary is an efficient and useful data structure to store data when you will need to access that data by a unique key. Of course, we can also add, edit, and delete keys. Let's try adding the Roman numeral for 50, which is L. Adding it looks like this, a lot like accessing it. Roman numerals, subscript, the string L, we want to add this, gets the value of 50. And now we can try our function. We can try to convert as Roman numeral of 50. And what we'd want it to do is just give us an L. But actually what it did do is print out five X's. So what went wrong? Well, in our associative array, the order of the keys is not guaranteed. In Python's dictionary, the order is insertion order. And we've inserted our L value for 50 at the very end of our dictionary. So our function solves the question of converting 50 into Roman numerals by using the largest numeral that it finds in the dictionary first. So we want it to pick the largest numeral first and then work through all the numerals in order of the size of their value. That's how this logic will successfully convert numbers into Roman numerals, as we see here. But the order of our keys is not guaranteed. As I just said, in Python, it's insertion order. So here we can create a list of the keys and see what order they are. And indeed, it's as we added them, as I define them literally, 10, 9, 5, 4, 3, 1, and then L, because I inserted L at the very end. So there are other data structures we could use in Python. An ordered dictionary, for example, would allow us to determine or specify an order for our keys, which we could be sure was correct, meaning the keys, we could be sure that the keys were in the order of the size of their values. For our use case, though, we would need to either rewrite our as Roman numeral method to not rely on the um, not correct belief that our keys would always be in order, or we would have to insert all of our Roman numerals at the very start and then never insert any more later. And we could use a Python data structure called frozen dictionary, 
which is an immutable dictionary, meaning a dictionary that can't be changed once it's been created. And so we could use that frozen dictionary to ensure that our dictionary didn't actually accidentally um, get edited later to ensure that our logic would work. But for now, though, let's just remember not to write code that relies on a specific ordering of a dictionary's keys, because in Python, you can't guarantee that. There'll be an insertion order. People could edit it or delete keys. Um, and insertion order may not be what you want or what you're expecting for your logic. Modifying data is much the same as adding it in Python's dictionary. So here we're saying Roman numerals of the string L is going to get the value 49. We did that previously. We gave it the value of 50, and we can just overwrite the value that it had previously. And here we're accessing the value again, and it will print out for us 49. It's going to print, it's going to get the value of 49 as we just overwrote the previous value of 50. So finally, let's remove our troublesome L value because it may give people the wrong idea that we can convert numbers as large as 50 successfully. So let's remove that troublesome L value from our dictionary of Roman numerals. Here we can see what's in our dictionary of Roman numerals currently. You may notice um, here it's just printing them out prettily for us so that we can see this. This is not the, the order that our keys are actually stored. We saw that earlier in our list. Here, it's just printing it for us in lexicographic order of the keys, I, 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 and so on. So if we want to delete something, we use the keyword delete, and then we specify which key we want to delete in our dictionary. Delete Roman numerals key L. And when we do this and print our Roman numerals again, we see that L is no longer there. So that L is no longer troubling us and giving us the false idea that we can convert numbers as large as 50. Anyway, this has been a quick run through of associative arrays or the specific implementation dictionary as it's used in Python. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking the like button. If you'd like to see more content in a similar style, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for your time.